Hmm. Another staircase. It's no need. <laughs> Pagod ka na agad, Alison. Oh, yeah. Ini yang trash. Anjol, no. Hi guys, welcome yeah. back to Third and Ali channel. For today's video, we're going to visit the inside of Milan Cathedral. So iyan nga nakabili na kami ng ticket and we'll be able to finally see the inside of Milan Cathedral. And my special lane, yung may mga kids, specifically yung may stroller. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you Thank you. My special lane ang kids. Yadi, yung bag ko. Thanks. Work for the construction of Milan Cathedral began in 1386 when the style of Gothic cathedrals had reached its peak. It was decided that the new church should be built in the area of the ancient basilicas of Santa Maria Maggiore and Santa Tecla, the remains of which, together with those of the baptistery of San Giovanni Alifonti, are still visible in the archaeological area. The design of the church's facade began at the end of the 16th century when the foundations for its prospetto or front were laid. The 19th century saw great activity on the construction site. On the eve of Napoleon's coronation as king of Italy and on his initiative, new works were undertaken to complete the facade. It's from 1807 to 1813. The construction and decoration works continued, 
most of the spires were placed on the roof and several stained glass windows with enamel painted glass were also completed. The 20th century, which was marked by war and conflict, saw the start of major renovation works, the first archaeological excavations in Piazza del Duomo, and the completion of the facade with the addition of the doors which date back to a relatively recent period between 1909 and 1965. Second half of the 20th century, the Fabrica undertook the complete structural and conservative restoration of some complex parts of the Duomo. It was indeed a once-in-a-lifetime experience to witness the beauty of Milan Cathedral. The specialty about this cathedral is its beauty and it's the only building that has the vast amount of statues, over 3,400 statues and thousands of individual spires. This Gothic-style cathedral can comfortably fit in 40,000 people at a time. How will you light the candle? Yeah. Get two. One. Two. Two. Oh. Daddy, one euro each. Give Alison. Give Alison. Ah, Alison, no. Give Alison. Give Alison. Give Alison. Then we need to white it. You like this song. Alison, put your candle here. Alison, put your candle here. Oh. Whoa. Here. Look at this. We are. Hana, hana. I will light your candle, Alison. No, I need. Ooh. No, mm. no, that's by myself. Oh, look at Alison. Oh, put it there, Ali. Mm. There, Alison. Daddy, help me see Ali. Mm. Drop it. Mm. Very good, Alison. Mm. I cannot. I can't. Mm. <laughs> I'll help you. Like a pani ali. Heal. Okay, how about Alison? Here, Ali, drop here. Mm -hmm. 
Ayun. Here, you can see here, Iti. Here, yan o. Oh. Uh, go drop it. Drop. Mm -hmm. Drop your coins. No, drop your coins. That's how. That's how. Go. Say good. The three extensive stained glass windows in the apse is well chosen as the most supreme windows in the world. Milan Cathedral interior space has dim light, which is natural light prevailing from the stained glass windows. It is highly believed that the natural lights in churches is to meet or to get closer to God. Each window depicts a different story of the history linked to the architect who created the drawings. These figures and natural element drawings with vibrant colors are to give a spiritual and mystic feeling. These structures are considered to deliver a physical portrayal of the heavenly Jerusalem. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more updates. Thank you. Bye.